This is a continuation of the basics video series on the Benina uh, 1030 here. This series covers uh, more than just the 1030. You know, there's plenty of other models that Benina made that are very similar to this. That it covers also the likes of the 1031, the 1080, the 1130, the 1230 and the 1260. And I'm sure there are other models that this video will cover as well. So yeah, base, the basics video series is going to be on this model in particular, the 1030, but also as say covers the other models I mentioned before. So if you if, if you'd like to know how to just prepare the machine for sewing, you know, but just the basics like plugging it in and turning it on, uh, having a quick look at the accessories, take a look at my previous video. I'll link it in up here. I'll also be linking in all the videos in the series uh, in the description below, so check that out. So today it's going to be bobbin winding. I'll start by showing you how to remove the bobbin case. Okay, so first thing to do is um, make sure that the machine is turned off. The, there's a switch on the right hand side of the machine, which I show in the previous video. Also make sure the needle is raised and not down in the uh, machine like that there. So bring the needle right into its upper position there. And to remove the bobbin case, you get your fingernail under and pull this latch here, here. Pull that little latch out and grip the latch there and take the bobbin case out like so. And then you can turn the bobbin case up and the bobbin will drop out. And then we'll place a spool of thread on the one of the rear spool pins. It doesn't really matter which one at this stage. Although um, you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing. So you know you may want to have the bobbin winding spool on the right hand side and your sewing spool on the left here. So we come across here to the bobbin winder tensioner here. And you'll also notice there's an arrow here pointing clockwise, so you wrap the thread around clockwise. Like that there. And then you get a bobbin that you want to fill and place it on the bobbin winder shaft there. And then bring the thread across from the tensioner and wind the thread on clockwise like that and probably go around a half a dozen times. I find that seems to work quite well. And then hold the bobbin tight and just snap the thread off. Works quite well. There are many different ways you can do that. Some people thread the thread up through the holes here and trim it with the scissors after wrapping it around a few times. Um, so, but this seems to work okay. And then um, turn the machine on. So I'm on position one there. That's the full speed position. It doesn't really matter whether it's on the full speed or the half speed position there. And then you can, uh, you push in this lever here and the bobbin will automatically start to wind there. If you want to stop the winding, you can um, push that button there, stops the winder. But the winder will also stop when the bobbin is full, so that will automatically switch off. And you'll also notice that I'm putting a very small amount of pressure on here to stop this, this spool uh, from rattling around here. So you just want to make sure that you're not putting too much pressure there though because you don't want the thread stretching as it's being wound onto the bobbin. So I just very lightly hold that to stop it from rattling around. If you wanted to carry on sewing while you're winding a bobbin, I see no reason why you couldn't just, uh, you know, thread up the machine as per normal. I'll go through that in another video, threading, uh, and use the machine you know, while you're winding a bobbin. I see no reason why you can't do that. I haven't threaded the needle there, I'm just showing you that it would work. So if you didn't want to sit and wait for the bobbin to wind, you could carry on getting sewing done. You can see there that that's automatically uh, popped off there. Okay, and then there's a handy little cutter here. Once you remove the bobbin from the spindle there, you can wrap the thread around there's a little groove right at the bottom of the spindle 
and you can use that to cut the thread off like that and then you would probably want to remove the thread from the bobbin winder tensioner there just so that it doesn't get caught up in the workings here you can just wind that back onto the spool and just leave it there ready to wind another bobbin you could grab another bobbin right now if you're doing a lot of the same color you could grab another bobbin put it on there wind it while you are uh, sewing as well so now what we have to do is thread the bobbin into the bobbin case here and the key to this is when you pull the bobbin thread here the bobbin should turn in a clockwise direction there like that not like that not like that like that there and then you just place the bobbin into the bobbin case and you'll see a little slit here pull the thread into the slit like that and then pull the thread under the spring until it comes out between these two little fingers here and then you can go ahead and uh, grip the bobbin case either side and gently pull the thread and that should pull out nice and smoothly it shouldn't um, jam or you know feel tight or rough or anything like that there's several reasons why it might one of them is that it could be uh, the incorrect bobbin so you know Benina do use a reasonably specific bobbin yeah so you know if um, maybe you had an older singer bobbin or something like that in here it might not uh, work all that well uh, so just make sure you've got the right bobbin for the machine there are many different types of bobbin uh, the other problem that can crop up is the uh, the bobbin could be buckled or bent a good way of testing that is you can hold the uh, bobbin between your thumb and index finger and just pull the thread and you can see that the uh, the two walls of the bobbin are nice and parallel there's no buckling going on or anything like that and the other thing to look at also is uh, damage around the edge of the bobbin maybe where a needle has been hitting it and causing damage around the edge of the bobbin so you want to make sure your bobbin's in good condition I'll just quickly thread that up again that you'll also notice there's a little hole in the uh, this finger here you don't need to thread through that unless you're sewing buttonholes so don't thread through there and then we're ready to install the bobbin case there and again uh, you know the manual suggests uh, turning the machine off just for safety really just in case you accidentally uh, tread on the foot controller while you're putting this in it could damage uh, both yourself and the machine and also make sure the needles up out of the work there and we want to install the bobbin so that this little latch here is horizontal so there's a couple of ways you can do this uh, so what we're looking for here is this spindle here is going through the hole in the bobbin case there now some people will hold the bobbin case latch like that and install the bobbin like that make it click and you can pull the uh, bobbin thread and make sure that's coming out there nice and smoothly uh, if this is not latched in properly when you pull this thread the bobbin case may fall out of the machine so the other the other way you can do it is you don't have to hold the latch open is and that's just a matter of positioning and I find this the easier way and then it's just a matter of positioning the bobbin case into the machine making sure that this doesn't fall out of position like that so this little latch here needs to be horizontal and this little arm comes up on a slight angle with that little finger so that make sure that's horizontal and then give it a good push make it click and then pull the thread make sure that the bobbin case doesn't fall out and that it's coming out there nice and smoothly so that's it for the bobbin winding uh, bobbin case removal bobbin removal reinstallation 
I hope you found that helpful and thank you very much for watching.